I don't know what happened there. It just said something had gone wrong. Yeah, yeah. But I only have... Hello, Judith. Sorry about the um, um, breakdown in the broadcast there. No idea why. I shall just quickly put a quick little post up. Hopefully we'll be able to, um, hello again, sorry about the breakdown in the broadcast. Anyway, uh, I'll just press on. So yesterday, when we, I was talking about using those colours that I had so, hello, we're back, yes, that had so vividly appeared in my dream in a couple of little landscape paintings. And so the, the blue and the green and the bracken colour which is like a sort of ginger are now dry on these two little paintings uh, so we'll come back to them but there's also this Swaledale top with a wall and a, and uh, like the hills in the background to carry on with so I'll maybe tip you up hello Maria oh look we're back up to 14 that's fun yeah I don't know the internet something or other um, failure. Right, I shall just move my power source a little bit closer and we'll have another little look at, oops, I'll move my visor out of the way that apparently it's no use at all. I'm about to do a webinar or two so it's been lovely seeing your face. Bye, Holly. Bye bye. Right, I'm going to tip you up. And hopefully. Yes, you can see. I might just get you a tiny bit nearer. There we are. Okay, so. Blind, bits missing. Loads to do. Um, I'm going to fill in the gap. In real life, you probably have an ear poking out in here. But I, I think that sort of that sort of detail in a painting like this is just unnecessary. Right, so I'll get that really strange little brush that I introduced you to earlier during lockdown that is just so, so useful for um, any sort of sheep fleecy stuff like this. Oh, is, is it still working? It does, Emma Kasky. And see you as well. Hello, Emma, how are you? I was just telling somebody about our swim in September when we came up to your neck of the woods and had that, oh, that was such good fun. Swimming down the coquette. I tried to find the photograph so that I could, so I could show, oh, I know who it was. It was Nick Walton who brought me some hay. Yeah, so this brush is just ideal for doing fleece if you can just to show you uh it's just made for those sort of fleecy brush strokes so 
see. And then get a little bit darker maybe just to see. There. Just need to sort of add a head here and it just looks like a sheep. Anyway. So I was talking to my sister Elizabeth the other day and it was quite funny. She rang me up on FaceTime and she said, um, hello Annie Palmer, hello Anne. So my sister rang me up and said, um, hello, look, hello. And I said, hello. And she was, I think, I, don't know, I told you, she was having a socially distanced meeting with my mother who was uh, like on a chair right over on the other side of the room. She went, hello, with headphones on. and. And I do apologise if I'm repeating myself, but it is quite funny. And Elizabeth said, um, she said she she thought she saw you on Facebook the other day doing your painting, um, but she couldn't turn the volume up. And she said, Mum, what was the problem? So she said, well, I can't get the volume. She's using the television remote control to try to turn the volume up on her iPad. <laughs> Silly old thing. So tomorrow... Is Fifey's angiogram, and he is a little bit worried. And they've also told him to shave down there because um, they'll be maybe finding a vein down there rather in his in his hand, you know, in his groin. So no doubt there'll be a load of pelt to wash out of the bath tomorrow night, tonight. He's very hairy, Fifey. He's like a silverback. Jane, I was just saying that I said Fifey has to shave down there. Oh, the clippers? Good thing. Well, he's got his own. So I was just saying, no doubt, I'll have to clean that lot out of the bath. No? It's been a while. I have to do the blinking bath these days. So these are uh, like fleecy, fleecy bits I'm adding on now. I, you know, they really really adding depth um just a little bit more water here and can you see where i'm yeah getting the color from oh we were watching scottish television last night uh, as i was flicking through the channels um, with my Humax box and my smart telly, I'm still not really getting to grips with it. But I said, "Oh, stop! What's that?" As I was flicking through, and it was, um, you know, BBC Alba Scottish telly, and there's a program called The Mart, which we actually both found quite interesting. And it turned out that it was. Thanestone Mart up near uh, uh, Inverness or Aberdeen, I can't remember, but I've been up there funnily enough and um, I think, I can't remember why we went up there, but anyway, they had a one of those gangways above all the pens so you can look down on the pens of sheep and I did some drawings and paintings in fact and they were called Thanestone Mart so that was a long time ago. So it was quite nice to see it again and all the characters and laughing. E Jane, you would have liked it on um, BBC Alba. You know, the, do you ever watch it? Yeah. Uh, it's. I mean, it's quite irritating when they talk in whatever language it is they talk, so that English people can't understand them. Um, they do that quite a lot on BBC Alba. But this was in, you know, Scotty English. And um, the, it, it was at it was at the Mart up at Thainston, and 
the the guys you know that herd all the cattle what are they called you know the ones the ones that are in the pens with the alkathene pipes and they and they say you're not allowed to <laughs> well what are they called a wooden stick okay well the guys with the wooden sticks that you know the, i think there's a name for them is there not well they were they were dealing uh with these ginger cattle and i mean you could tell what where things were going to go they were leaping around and Limmies. what is limmies limmies and it was really really funny because they got some good footage of these poor guys in their do they wear a brown coat or a white yeah. coat a brown coat brown uh trying to avoid being killed basically by these ginger really feisty cattle and they were explaining how nowadays cattle aren't handled as much by humans as they used to so they, they can be quite feisty and they have to really watch out that they don't get decked did you hear what jane just said there she said it's a telltale sign if the owner of the cattle hides behind the barrier <laughs> Well, on this program, all the owners were stood right next to the auctioneer, making the auctioneer feel extremely uncomfortable and under pressure. They all did. Yeah. Do you do that? Yeah, stand next to Chris. Chris Armstrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jane was just saying you have to stand next to the auctioneer because then you can lean over and say, yeah, let it go, let it go for that, or no, not enough, presumably. And then you stomp off in a huff. <laughs> Never, enough. Never enough. There was one woman on the programme last night and um, she said, if it was quite hard to understand what she was saying, but the gist of it was if she got a thousand pounds, no, no, it was sheep, sorry. If she got £100 for each of these uh, lambs, she would be maybe content. Well, they got up and over 100 and she was trying to keep a straight face and she was absolutely delighted. Because it's so public and, you know, it's like having your pictures auctioned, which I will not do. When people say, now we're having a charity auction, I just put my hand up and say, I'll stop you there. Because if that's one thing I will not do, that is the one thing I will not do. Charity blinking auctions. Yeah. So you can have the humiliation of seeing your work not fetch anything like what the um, going rate might be or more. And that's embarrassing as well. And it doesn't benefit me at all. Just going to tip you up for a second. Um, bullock wallopers. Celia Ridley says bullock wallopers. That's exactly. Sorry? <laughs> I don't know. Ha ha. I just came in on that bath conversation and wondered what you were doing with the sheep in the bath. Hmm. <laughs> drovers, drovers. Thank you, Emma Kasky. I knew you'd know. Okay. Um, right, so we've got, I think, quite a nice fleece, but his face is looking a little bit bare and so is the horn, so we'll have a little go. I'm going to put a bit more depth in that, actually. So Emma Kasky, have you been painting any more sheep? Or have I um have I put you off doing it after laughing at the one that you did that you showed us that day? Thing is, Emma, you're very talented at a lot of things and you need to be able to take a bit of 
ribbing. Have you been to her house, Jane? No. no. Well then, she's a very good interior designer, I can tell you. It's really, really nice. What a big sucker you are. I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> Whatever Emma puts her mind to, she'd be good at. I love the light on top of the horn. Thank you, Anne. Do you say that about me ever, Jane, when I'm not listening? Ah, oh, well, yes. Uh, well, it's going to be a long time, I think, before that happens. If ever. So that, that works out, but remember, it will lighten up. Now, I just get a tiny, really, really, really pale, pale, pale wash because this face is looking a little bit too white. I can pick up on a little bit of the colour down here and drag it across there. I am going to, when it's dry, I'm going to put a bit more of a curve, a little bit more, of a, not a Roman nose, but just a bit more of a curve onto, onto this top's nose. And for those of you who maybe missed that, a top is the same as a ram, okay? Uh, this stone wall, we could do a little bit here, but before I do that, I'm going to add a bit of depth to the colour in the foreground. I'm making sure that it hasn't vanished. Hello, Jane Pybus. Emma says, thanks, Jane. And I think she means it. Jane's um, busy packing, packing a frame print to send away. That's why she's making such a racket. Just a bit of shadow under the wall there. And where the uh, sheep itself casts a bit of a shadow. Look and learn, Emma Kasky. Okay. So the stone wall. Where's that brush gone? Just picking up on a little bit of colour off my 
board. Oops, just drip there. I'll probably come back and do a bit more, a bit more to the wall and uh, add the capping stones on the top that Fiona Ashford very kindly supplied me with the name for the other day. Just pick up a tiny bit of the green from the wet paint below. A little bit more over here. Working upside down, don't you think that's uh, something? It's quite nice just letting letting the sort of um, blurry bits dictate what shape the stones will be. Right. So there's still quite a lot to do here. Um, let me just tip. I didn't realise what the hell the time had got on. Hello, Joanne Willis. Hello, how are you? Hello, Alan Leonard. Will the poor fella get an eyeball at some point? I don't know whether he will. Um, you know the other one I did the other day? This one. It's not really missing an eye. I mean, it's there somewhere. Well, that's what we could do. Uh, I'll just put that one to one side and I'll leave it upside down so that the dark that I want to be here next to the wall stays dark. Let gravity help. So I'll just leave that there. Um, this one, I thought it might be quite fun to have some sort of bits of maybe hawthorn or something just sticking out the back of the, the back of the wall. So we could do that now. Oops. Now then, there's a lot of wet paint here. I don't really want to get that. I took my clothes off yesterday and I had a pure white t-shirt on underneath. And when I lift, when I took it off, there was like a great big patch here of that colour paint, which will probably never come off.
It's quite fun. <laughs> you need a good big lungful to get them going. <laughs> it's quite fun. I'll carry on doing that. And <laughs> brilliant. Don't you ever spit on the painting? Yeah, look. No, I'm only joking. Um, do I spit on the painting? Yes, there probably is some spit there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's, I would probably just carry on building that up so it just looks like on the other side of that wall is um, a bare winter hawthorn hedge type thing. Oh good, I've provoked a bit of mirth, I see. So um, I was going to do something with my, my dream paintings. Maybe I'll do that this afternoon. Anyway, uh, I think you've had plenty to be getting on with to give you some ideas. And uh, oh, quickly, quickly. Now then, this fleece, I'm just going to give the treatment that I always give the fleece. I'm just going to tip you up be a little bit closer. Uh, get my really nasty little toothbrushy, very rough brush. Uh, wet it a bit. Oh, that's what yesterday I was de doing a demo about how to do an eye to the group I was telling you about. Uh, I think that I'm going to pick up on the blues in the stone wall. And just add a tiny little bit of that to the fleece. You can hardly make it out. You might not be able to make it out, but I'm just making the palest of sort of flex. Otherwise, it's all a little bit too natural. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. You're going to do a dream painting without us. Beth, you need to get up a bit earlier. I have to say, I have been waking up. My body has not accepted the fact that we're now in crazy time where instead of it being seven o'clock, it's six o'clock or something. And, and I'm waking up at four o'clock, five o'clock, hence bags under eyes. And then I'm just about ready to fall asleep at eight o'clock at night. So instead of going to sleep, I just raid the kitchen and um, eat, eat. So, and, and which isn't going to work because I can't do my evening four and a half mile circular walks. But I have got a plan because obviously it gets too dark. But I have a plan and I discussed it with Fifey. I don't know what that all is there. Like, it's like, hey. Anyway, I thought that... Instead of doing the walk that goes all the way around East Woodburn and West Woodburn, uh, which involves quite a bit of coming back on the road, I've got another plan. Go away when it's, there's still a bit of light. Take my back with a, with a head torch and a high-vis jacket with the dogs. 
go over the A68 into the village, up what we call the Lonon, and then up towards the A68, which is a big road, over the A68, and then I'm back onto this side of the hill where I don't need to worry about cars, and um, go all the way, Emma will know what I mean, all the way along the Beacon Road, and then drop down to Hyleen, and then walk down the Richard Cross Road to Woodhouse, and then back. Won't mean anything to any of you except Emma. Anyway, it's been lovely spending time with you. Next time I see you, five you will have had his hand to your ground. Right. Have a lovely day. Bye.